Well, here I am at Light Rice Farm. We're basically an arable farm. We do have a little bit of grass, but mainly it's crops. I farm a little over 400 acres for the CRT and about twice as much in my own right. The crops we grow are basically split into autumn sown, which is wheat, barley and oats. And then the remainder are sown in the spring. And again, this year it's wheat, barley, oats, and also a bit more of an unusual crop, triticale. Um, we have mixed machinery because some of the soil is heavy, some is light. And so as you'll see later on, as I talk through it, there's different machines for different soil types. Well, I'm standing here in front of my cultivator. This is called a Torano. This has largely superseded things like a plough. Everyone knows about a plough. They've been here 2,000 years. They do a really good job. Environmentally, they're not great because they dig the soil to a foot deep, 30 centimetres, turn it over, and if you're an invertebrate in there, your whole world's tipped upside down. Whereas this goes through much shallower, does a similar job, but it leaves much of the soil structure in place and so it's, it's much better for the environment. Um, the field behind me is about 10 acres, 4 hectares. And if I were ploughing it, it would take about a day to plough it. Whereas with this machine, we would do it in two hours maximum. I'm standing here in front of a power harrow. These have been about quite a few years. This particular machine is five metres wide, and basically what happens, under, under here you have some tines or spikes that contra-rotate and they help to create a seed bed. They're very, very effective, but there's two downsides. One is they're expensive to use, they use a lot of fuel because energy from the tractor is transferred through here um, to generate the motion of the times. Um, that is expensive, they're also very slow. The reason I bought this is we have a lot of overwintered stubbles and everybody knows overwintered stubbles are really good for the environment because you leave all the crop residues there and birds, mammals etc can feed throughout the winter on sport grains. The trade-off is that in the spring it's invariably wet well, here we are. This is my most recent toy on the farm. It's a direct drill. Drills sow seeds. So basically, we put the seeds in this hopper up here. Holds only about half a ton, so it's not the largest drill in the world. The seeds are basically, gravity makes them fall into the bottom. Then a fan blows the seeds down all of these individual pipes to the discs that are here and I don't know if we can see the discs but basically they cut a groove in the soil and the seed is blown into the groove and then following the drill we have some very heavy cast iron presses that squeeze the soil back around the seed. Direct drills are very popular at the moment because they're very, very cheap to run. There is absolute minimal soil disturbance. Environmentally, they're brilliant. But it has to be said, the jury is out as to their profitability. There's no denying they're cheap to run, but how good will your crops be? But environmentally, the soil disturbance, retention of moisture, keeping the weeds buried out of the ground, out of the way, tick loads and loads of boxes. But conventional farming, whether it be with a plough or a Tirano that we mentioned, and then the normal cultivation systems allow a much greater flexibility. But I want this to work well. So we'll see when, the, at the moment we've only trialled it, but this next autumn we will be sowing direct drilled crops across the whole farm. The final bit of seedbed preparation or following um, sowing the seeds are rolls. These particular ones are folded up. They basically, this 
goes down on the ground with the two bits underneath open up. And the purpose of this, these turn round, these chaps here, uh, they break, hopefully break any clods. And a key thing about farming is retaining moisture and getting a close intimacy between the soil and the seed. And so after you've moved the soil with a seed drill, you then want to push it all back as tight as you can. And these cast iron rings weigh an awful lot and their purpose is just literally to go over the soil and press it all back down again. Well, I've already spoken about preparing seed beds, sowing seed beds. The other things that happen is we need to make sure by and large there's as few weeds as possible in the crops. It doesn't get too much disease and it has fertiliser to make it grow healthily. And then finally, come end of July, August, we go through with a combine harvester. Basically what the combine does, it cuts the dry straw. This thing we call a reel, feeds the straw through the combine. Then the combine basically is a massive sieve. And so what it does, there's a drum in it like this, and that separates the chaff and grain from the straw. It then sits on sieves and there's a big fan and it blows the light stuff out of the back of the combine and the tricky thing is getting the fan speed so it's strong enough to blow the rubbish out the back of the combine but the seeds fall through a sieve and then they're collected in a tank and then the combine holds about seven tons of grain maybe a bit more and then when the grain tank is full, we then empty that into a trailer and that is taken back to the barn. And then that wheat or barley ends up in one way or another inside our stomach.